Hello, artists. Welcome to Drawing with Jesse. Um, today, we <laughs> today, <Sorry. laughs> today we'll be drawing um, this uh, this guy again, and uh, he's a coyote. And um, the suggestion for drawing a coyote was from Liz. Thank you. And the photograph we're using is from a photographer at Pixabay, and the link to his work is in the description. So um, last week we kind of roughed in uh, where this coyote would be on everybody's pages. Um, and then this week, um, we're just going to take it to the next step. So, um, I always start off by assessing where a drawing is and, um, you know, what issues I see and then what things I really love about the photograph and how to make sure that ends up in the final drawing. So let me know if you were here um, last week, if you've already sketched in your coyote, um, and um, or if you're starting off from scratch this week. And if there are any areas that you wanna focus on or that you would like to see, um, uh, how how to flush them out that sort of thing just let me know all of your questions and comments are always welcome and so um so when i was checking this guy out uh just to get prepared this area seems a little scrunched and i think part of that is just the difference between the edge of his body and the edge of his fur. I've kind of added bulk to him in the shoulder, but not so much in the hip. So I'm going to play with that a little bit and see if I can address that issue of just looking a little bit scrunched right in here. Also, this leg needs a little bit more dimension it looks kind of big and also flat so I'm going to add some shadowing and also look at the difference between the edge of the fur and the edge of um of the the leg itself okay. and yeah um car says hi in answer to the startup screen question my dog is my profile pic <laughs> awesome. continuing along from last week Awesome. Hi, Cars. I love it. Uh, and so, let's see. So I'm just looking around for little things that bother me while my eyes are still fresh. Because um, having fresh eyes, it is really something to take advantage of. It's um, it's easy to get sucked in and not really see it see a drawing objectively, um, and like walking away and coming back to it. That's about as objective <laughs> as you can get. So I'm gonna take advantage of that. This area right here is such a challenge. And so I'm just going to try to suss out what's happening. And part of it is that right here, I'm not seeing that real fur. And then down here I am. And so um, I think it's, you know, it's just one of those things that makes it challenging to see. And then, let's see, let me do some measuring. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, so 
I'm just comparing different parts of this coyote to each other. And so, yeah. Normally I'm reading, when I'm reading comments, I read it like um, with just the comments, but I decided yeah. to read it with the um, like video too. And oh. I just want to say that coyote is cute. Aw. Both on the left and the right. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. So I'm measuring away just to see how all of these proportions fit together. And so um, one of the things that is easiest for me to measure is from the ground plane to the top of the head. And so I'm comparing that to the distances of, of the back. And um, my back needs to get longer. So, just a little bit here. And see how that, um, how that affects how this whole thing looks. And that would put some of these marks right back here. And so I think this whole um, assessing and correcting thing is so important in drawing. And um, it's funny because it, it feels weird, especially doing it um, you know, on camera. But it really is part of every drawing of just assessing and correcting. And um, there we go. And, or at least it's a big part of, of my process. And this goes down a little bit. So we kind of color shift here. And then, let's see. <gasps> Just softening up these lines a little bit. Um, having really hard lines in places they don't belong can make it hard for me to see uh, what really is going on. And so now this gets stretched out a teeny bit more. I'm going to have to step back a little bit to see if that, if that seems good, if it's corrected the issue there. And this part here. I'm going to give it a little bit more dimension. Um, so it's easier to see. Um, Might be one of those things that haunts me for a little while. <laughs> so, so today I think it'd be neat to get in some background or make some decisions about the background and to um, darken up some of the places that feel like they could get darker and just get a little bit more confident with um, with the drawing itself, the, you know, where, where things are laid out. And so I was, here, I was looking at this background 
And in the photograph, there's this hill that comes in and um, goes right behind the ears and it kind of mirrors the shape of the dog or the <clears throat> coyote, excuse me. Um, and that's kind of cool. There's also this uh, ground plane right along here and right behind the path. So um, that's kind of neat. That, and there's these uh, little grasses that are right along the edge here. And uh, we can have them as sort of the edge between dirt and pavement or just um, as like a little chunk of nature right here. Um, I was thinking though with the background that it might be neat to instead of um, instead of kind of mirroring the coyote's posture here, we could do the opposite and um, make kind of an X and draw attention like an arrow to his face. Um, in art school, one of the things they said was don't don't cut off a person right at the neck. It's very disconcerting. <laughs> like above or below. That's, you know, good. And it's funny, it can be very disconcerting. So I think we could uh, put our ground plane up here. I'm just going to try this out. You are welcome to follow what's in the photograph, follow what I do, ignore the background and have him um, have it be more of a traditional portrait um, without a background, whatever makes you happy. And um, so to me, this is kind of fun. It's I don't want it to be exactly a mirror image of the dog, but backwards. So there's kind of a, an angle right here. So I'm going to move that uh, over here a little bit. <laughs> uh, let's see. So I'll put it right up there. So you can tell I play around with my edges a little bit. Oh my gosh, Otter's been going nuts, so he's um <sighs> stir crazy, I guess. And sorry, <laughs> we're lucky that we don't have any neighbors right close. Um and Okay, and then I kind of ignore the bottom here. Let's see. So I'm just going to leave that there for a little while and just kind of see how I feel about it and um, let me know what you guys do with your backgrounds. And so right in here, this area, let's see, there's the hair that comes out in this thick Puffs. Let's see. So I'm just trying to get the right feeling so I can um, it really helps with judging the sizes of different things. If it's you know if it has the dimension that I'm seeing in real life. Darken up this part a little bit. And 
So today I'm using uh, plain old number two and the gray kneadable eraser and some typing paper. Get some of these a little bit darker areas. And because this is fur, um, you could put all your marks in the direction of the hair and get kind of a neat effect with that. Um, I'm still just working on. Um, I'm narrowing down the values and getting getting the drawing um, corrected in places that irritate me and so And so there's this um, darker area where it looks like the skin turns a little bit and then we're seeing a different angle of the fur. Um, and right here there's these gorgeous darks right in this area. And up from this second line across here, back to the fur of the knee. This is beautiful dark shadow here. And whoops, on the screen. Excuse the camera jiggle there. Um, grab my 4B pencil and I finally just ordered some new ones. So I should have um, a pencil that's a little bit longer for next week. Uh, it's so funny to, yeah, so exciting having pencils coming in the mail. So. So um, I'm just putting in, um, I'm not trying to make it filled in completely. I kind of like the look of separate lines. So I'm putting in kind of this scribbly 45 degree angle um, little lines and, um, and those are kind of the base. Uh, angle for my shading um, and so I don't think they'll be confusing that these lines are going to be different from the fur the angle of the fur um, let's see. and let's see so the coyote is, there's this shadow on the ground, like a little bit darker area of the ground, right along this area. And that's kind of neat, so I'm just going to fill that in. And, um, and there's this lighter area below him that's almost like he's underlined. That's kind of lovely. Um, I'm going to come back in and get some of that. And I'll just... Do 
you get a little bit of it in there. And, and all of this is still erasable, so if I um, if I come back next week and say, oh no, <laughs> I don't like that, um, there's no issue with just getting rid of it. Okay, and then this shadow right here is the strongest indicator of where exactly this light is coming from. That's really pretty. And it's also a shadow right under here that's kind of doing the same job. And this And I'm just using the 4B on the Coyote right now because um, I'm still up in the air about the background um, and uh, I want it to be as easy to erase as possible if I, uh, if I decide that you know the background should be something different. Um, so the foreleg, let's see, making something super pointy for <laughs> getting in here and erasing specific things. Uh, so let's see, the foreleg, it's so um, thin right here. This is an awkward position for me to hold my arm in, so I'm <laughs> pulling out all the erasers. And the shadow, um, so the, the skin is coming around and then making a shadow right underneath. Um, and it makes the whole forearm look much thinner than it does without that. Um, well, the shadow and then the highlight right underneath it, that really makes it look thinner. All toes in there. Let's see. So I'm going to try erasing the little highlight on the bottom. There's the shadow, and then right under it is the highlight, and then that's the end of the, um, the edge of the arm. And so I'm going to see if getting the shadow and the highlight make the arm look the right thickness, right thinness. And it kind of ends right there. And... Let's see. It seems a little closer. It's not quite there yet, but it's a little closer. A value shift from the look, the front part of this leg. There. So I have been drawing like crazy the last couple days. I'm um, I'm working on a commission that I'm really excited about. Um, and so I'm doing the beginning stages 
where I, um, you know, I'm drawing a lot of different compositions. <laughs> and, uh, I finally had a little bit of a turning point. I was so stuck. Um, and I realized that uh, I was ignoring one of the fundamentals of, um, of having things point uh, left <laughs> rather than right. And um, that's such a breakthrough. So I'm excited to see um, uh, if that if that makes the whole thing come together now. Fingers crossed. But it's funny the the um, sketching before the painting is really one of the most important parts of the whole process, but it's so invisible. Like, um, Uh, I have to come back for this part too. No. All right, so it made it so much thinner. <laughs> but uh, I think I might actually have to thicken up. Let's pour them a little bit. Okay. okay. And then there's this little transition from where there's a shadow uh, right as the skin is kind of sticking to the bone and then where there isn't and it breaks the shape up a little bit okay. so there's also a darker area right in here Or is so pretty <laughs> you can see uh, so many different values depending on which direction it's going. It's really beautiful. And this line right in here, so important. And darken up the background right in here a little bit. So. Just to really see the edge of the fur. And we do it right back here behind just to um, make it not disconcerting to have only shadows on one side. Okay. So these values are really similar, and that's kind of beautiful right there. Let's see. What do you say? Should we get a little bit more detail on his face or get more of the, the big picture and then really 
zoom in on the face next week. Do you have a preference? Let me know in the chat if you do. And I'm gonna keep looking at the bigger picture here and seeing what what needs to change. This leg at fur. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. Let's see. So I'm just putting some little V's into the edge here to um, break up so it feels more like um, like the kind of edge that it is, that it's just fur, it's not a solid edge way out here. And Okay, so I'm using my 4B and just getting some darker value in the middle here. And um, yeah. And right under the tail, there's um, some shadow shining through back here, which is really pretty. And... Oh, like a, um, Car says, <laughs> it does look like the coyote would be really fluffy and soft. I'm willing to try to wait on face details until next week, but I do keep catching myself fiddling with it some already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel the same way. I'm so drawn to that face, but I, I feel like it should wait. <laughs> it's a cute face. It is. It is. Well, next week I'll zoom the image way in before I start, and uh, so we can really look at that face. Um, and uh, cool. Oh my gosh, I dreamt last night that we got a cat. That was so funny. I completely far forgot until just now. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I, uh, gosh. I just saw some really cute cat videos yesterday and it <laughs> really got to me <laughs> okay so this back leg it's just like a spiral of fur like a fur flower here And so I'm going to get some of these little chunks of fur coming up. And then here, I'm going to rein it in a tiny bit. It's like a little dance between. Um, you know, the fur going out too far and then the, the body coming back this way too far. So I dance back and forth until it feels like it's in the right place. And uh, let's see. And I think it can actually be really neat if, um, you know, some areas are left very 
loose and kind of to the imagination. Um, but it feels like getting a really good understanding makes that work out well, uh, you know, confidently, I guess. Okay, so this line right here is relatively flat, what I'm seeing in the photo. So I'm going to bring this a teeny bit and this um, back leg doesn't have as much of a hard angle as the um, shadow part here. Actually, this doesn't have as much of a hard angle either, the or hard edge. Let's soften this up a little bit. And that is the point at which the eraser turns into a pencil. <laughs> there, here we go. So I'm starting to get some permanent and erasable marks here. Carson, says you won't tell Otter and Dozer about your green cat if you don't. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. We used to have a cat and they were both really good. Oh, uh, with with the you know living with a cat that um, yeah yeah I wonder if they would be jealous now since it's been it's been years since then. So. Let's see. This is really interesting. This fur area is almost like a transition between the body and the leg. It's just, um, let's see. It's really fluffy and it, and it really, um, I see the values are similar and the angle of the fur is similar. There, I'm just doing some little loop de loops <laughs> to, uh, you know, it's like a visual reminder of things I've noticed. There, let me get in some of the direction of the fur here. So interesting. And then up here, the fur on the leg is kind of sticking straight up. And I don't know, if you're a Star Wars fan, maybe you remember the one with the little, uh, or, or Star Trek, excuse me, Star Trek fan, there were the little fur blobs that were running all over. <laughs> one episode. I, I feel like that's what I'm drawing right in here. And so here, it looks like the center of this whole splaying of fur is right about here. Let's see what I can do here. Yeah, sort of capture that a little bit. And I think this is one of the things that makes drawing so fun is you can get so lost in trying to really understand a visual puzzle like this. Um, 
So how does it fit together? What are the proportions? Where's the center? What's darker and what's lighter? And um, yeah, it can be very absorbing, I think. Okay, there we go. So there's this um, curve that's a little bit like this and then the fur is coming out like this. Parsons tribbles, yep. <laughs> tribbles, yeah. <laughs> I have to I have to find some tribbles <laughs> and see if they're similar to this leg or if I'm remembering them. Funny. So there's a little bit of um, you know fur in patches, and so there's a lighter or um, segments or you know just chunks of fur that are separated by little shadows here. So let's see if I can bring some of those out a teeny bit. And, and then soften up some of this. There we go. Good. I feel like it's getting closer here. And so there's this uh, like lighter area of fur right in here and then just a little bit of a shadow or more cream colored fur right through here. And then over here, there's this nice uh, like a halo along the edge, and um, it's like the halo for, and then outside of that, there's this darker area. I think that's really neat, and let's see. I'm just going to play around with some of the background stuff here, see if I want that in or not, but I darken this up a smidge so that the halo stands out and the darker area like stands out. Get my lines, my angles <laughs> about the same. So, and again, I'm just going back to the number two pencil because I, I really want to be able to erase this without hassle if I change my mind. And, okay, so here we go. The face has this really white fur right over on the on the cheek. Okay. About there. And then this part is a smidge darker. And then the shoulder, let's see from the shoulder. all the way down to about here is a darker still. Let's see. OK. 
exhale. You can really see the sort of turning of the hips right in this area right here. And so let's see. I'm going to bring this shadow up a teeny bit. And So I kind of want to be confident before I start putting my number four pencil out here. There's where exactly the halo and the black area go, I think will um, really influence how the whole shape looks. So let's see. some of this explosion of fur right over here. And and Let's see. Same sort of thing along the tail. There's this highlighted fur right along the edge. And then up here. That's kind of inside where I've drawn my lines a little bit. And Let's see. And then it's not really happening right here, the, the halo. And on the other side, this line, I'm going to soften that up. I'll probably do that next week. So how would you feel about leaving it right there and having some fun with making some nice dark lines on a piece of scratch paper? I know uh, we had talked about how sometimes making really dark lines can be fun and sometimes it can be intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, I think practicing can really make it a lot more fun. So if that sounds good to you, let me know. Otherwise, I'll keep kind of looking and assessing and um, seeing where it can get a little bit more finished, like where it can where I can kind of commit to it a little bit more.
Awesome. <laughs> cool. Let's do it. I'm going to just set aside the coyote and um, I feel like this guy should have a name. <laughs> I'm going to set it right back there and That sounds like a good idea to build bravery. Awesome. Let's do it. So, um, I'm going to start with a number two pencil and just, um, <laughs> and just make some big squiggles. And I'm start light and just get darker and darker and see how dark it can go. I'm going to lay my pencil down sideways so I don't tear my paper. Um, and there we go. And you can see the faster and darker you go, you almost get a little bit more control. Um, and that's about as dark as I can get uh, with my number two. And I'm going to try it at an angle and do exactly the same thing. I'm going to start off lightly and then just get faster and darker and as dark as I possibly can. And and it's interesting, like you can sense that your control is different depending on how fast you're going and how dark you're going. And <laughs> it's wearing down the pencil a little bit. And so horizontal marks are very awkward for me. Um, I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. And and I've got like no control. <laughs> <laughs> going the other way also super funny but there we go I start off light and get darker and darker and darker yeah so let's see Let's give ourselves a little challenge. Actually, let's have fun with a softer pencil first. Um, and so grab the softest pencil you want. I have my 4B here and it's handy. Um, and try the same thing, but this time let's um, give ourselves a little challenge and make kind of an hourglass here. And, um, and let's just shade this thing in, uh, or just color the whole thing in. And, um, I'm going to do the angled, angled lines again and start softly and go as dark as possible and just see how fast I can go and still get somewhat close to those edges. I'm not totally close, <laughs> but it's okay. All right, let's see. So just see what speed you can go and get somewhat close to your side. And there. So that's pretty permanent. Yep. Cool. <laughs> And let's see, let's cut this guy in half and just see for the bottom half how dark you can get if you go over this again. Um, just pushing as hard as you can without damaging your pencil.
and uh, you can see you know as it as it dulls your lines get nice and fat I have to sharpen mine up a little bit. Oh, I really am getting to the end of this <laughs> pencil. I've had it for so long. Uh. It's not sharpening very easily. So yeah, just keep having fun with um, like seeing how dark you can go, how how hard you can push, and uh, like what speed you need to go when you're pushing really hard in order to this pencil in order to um, have really good control. My pencils. Uh, my uh, it's breaking as I'm trying to sharpen it. It's uh, getting to the end. <laughs> and that is really getting to the end. <laughs> so here, let's try something silly here. Um, we're going to do a little circle and um, I'm just being messy here. I'm doing a circle and then on the right hand side, I'm going to shade it in and, and I'm just going to go slow enough to go from edge to edge without going over. Um, And then you can come back and just go super dark. And I'm just aiming for something sort of uniform. And again, we're just kind of practicing like how, how can you go really dark and also feel like you're in control a little bit. <laughs> and here we go. Now we're going to do this area right down here, uh, but not quite as dark. And uh, here we go. Let's give ourselves a little highlight here and do like a pretty light coat around this. So <laughs> I'm just having fun with some different doodles, different ways to practice uh, drawing uh, just really hard uh, and having fun with it. Um, another thing some people do is try to do um, a, different values and see if you can do like a very light value and pressing as lightly as possible. Um, I have my pencil standing up so the lines are very skinny. Um, and then here I'll do a medium value. I'm leaning my pencil over a little bit. Um, I wore it down up here so it's it's got a wider area if I lean it over a little bit. So I just want to see if I can get it darker than that. And here I want to go really dark. Just 
So I'm just testing out how dark can my 4B go. And uh, and I'm not trying to be pretty about it. I'm just trying to see how dark it can go. And then since this is about as light as it goes when I'm just barely touching it, and that's about as dark as it goes, let's see if we can get that kind of in the middle. And uh, Pass. Something like that. I'm just filling in the edges or whatever. So what do you think? Was that fun? <laughs> I think stuff like this is kind of a blast. And um, you know, just seeing how far can you go with a pencil? What'll it what are the different things it'll do? Um you know, what can you do with this guy? You could turn it into an alien. You could turn it into, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, give it a shadow. There we go. But, uh, yeah. Let's see. So, one of the things that can be, um, let's see, I'm trying to think of something really challenging and fun, uh, challenging in terms of um, a place where it would be stressful for maybe to put dark, uh, really dark lines. And um, let's see, I'm gonna draw this little pencil here and um, Tiny eraser. Super loose little drawing. <laughs> you can tell that I uh, sharpen this pencil so irregularly. But see this. There we go. And so it can be very challenging to put really dark lines, especially if you feel like um, you're not able to control your pencil as well. When you are feeling attached to a drawing, and so um, you know something that you can practice with is doing a drawing that's just a doodle. You're not super attached to it, but the fact that you took a couple minutes to um, draw something out, um, you know, makes you feel pretty attached. And so you can just find a couple spots, like, okay, let's do the tip of the pencil and just crank down on it and really get it nice and dark. Um, or maybe this line underneath and um, no, I'm not using a ruler or anything to make that straight, obviously. But you know, I'm gonna darken that up somewhat. And then this down here, just really gonna crank up the value on that. And right here, let's get a strong shadow. And So yeah, it's it's hard to tell that this is a clip. It's kind of a silly little thing, but there. You get some really dark lines to just kind of imply that there's some weight there, that there's a shadow. So that can be that can be a really fun way to challenge it. If, like uh, do some drawings that you know aren't for keeps; they're just for practicing, getting some really strong uh, 
uh, dark marks. And and just um, see what kind of marks you really like when you're getting loose and um, you know doing stuff like this can really loosen you up for the next thing. So let me know what you think of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, feel free to chat any questions, any comments. Um, let me know if that was fun or or um, <laughs> if you if you liked this, um, and. Um, and uh, I'll be back next week. We'll zoom in on the coyote's face a little bit, get up a little bit closer. And um, what else? I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. Um, if you watch this later on, feel free to leave comments. I always respond to those. Um, and what else? I feel like I'm missing some news. <laughs> but uh, thanks for joining me. Please like if you like. Um, uh, comment if you have anything to say. And um, I'll see you next week. Uh, Car says it was good to see how dark it can get with these pencils without risking the drawing. Thanks. Awesome. I'm so glad. <laughs> okay. Bye.